In this video, we're going to be discussing the posterior SAG sign test, which is one of the special tests used in the assessment of a PCL injury. To perform the posterior SAG sign test, the patient will be positioned in supine, but the hips and the knees are going to be brought into 90 degrees of flexion. Now, I'm just assessing the right knee here. Of course, you should assess both sides. However, you can do both sides at the same time. The advantage of assessing both knees at the same time is that you can compare the result visually for the affected side right next to the result of the unaffected side and see if there's actually a difference there. In any case, the PT is going to support the patient's feet in this position shown right here. Now obviously I'm supporting her foot manually with my hand, but you can use another object and place it under the heel like a chair, a seat, a box, something to support the heel, and that allows you to take a step back. And the reason that might be important is I'm way up here. My eyes are not even in the video, so I'm having to look down. I may need to take a step back and get on eye level with the knee so I can really assess to see if there's what we call a tibial sag. The other thing to notice is that I'm only providing support distally at the foot of the ankle. I'm not providing any support proximally at the calf. If you provide support proximally at the calf, you're going to drastically increase the likelihood of a false negative, and that makes this test invalid. And what you're looking for is right here where my mouse is. You're looking for tibial sag, a drop of the tibia relative to the knee joint. If that doesn't make sense, we're going to look at a bigger picture on the next slide. Over here on the left is a negative result, a negative posterior sag sign. This is what you would expect to see in the case of a healthy, intact PCL. So if we look over here, follow to the end of the patella, and just go right across, notice it's just flat. Maybe there's a little bump right here from the tibial tuberosity, but again, it's flat. There's no dip. There's no sag, right? Okay. And remember, what's the function of the PCL? It restricts posterior tibial translation relative to the femur. Okay. So what happens if the PCL is not intact? Well, then there's not as much restriction of posterior tibial translation. That results in a positive posterior sag sign, sometimes just called a sag sign. If we come up here to the end of the patella, which is about right here, notice that there's now a big divot, a dip right here, okay, or a sag. And why would there be a sag in this case? Well, the PCL is not intact, and now we have excessive posterior tibial translation. Remember, calf muscles down here, so going downward in the picture is actually posterior in terms of the tibia. So PCL is not intact, so gravity here is actually causing the proximal tibia to sag downward or posteriorly relative to the femur. And so this would be a positive sag sign, and this would be indicative of a PCL injury. So again, a positive test here would be tibial sag on the affected side. But again, you always want to compare this to the unaffected side, which is why in most cases it's advantageous to do this with both knees at the same time. Get a nice side-by-side -side comparison. Now the posterior sag sign test is actually very powerful as a standalone test, not really because of the sensitivity, which is only 79%, but because the specificity is all the way up at 100%. So basically, if somebody tests positive for the posterior sag sign test, there's a 100% chance that they have a PCL injury. So this test is not that great to rule out a PCL injury, but obviously amazing at ruling it in. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.